Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome to another great video tutorial. As many of you may know, I recently had uh, a baby girl, uh, September 2nd, and uh, it's an amazing thing, really. Um, you know, it really changes, you know, your outlook, you know, what you kind of see in life and, you know, you start focusing on goals and you just realize that there's so much more to life, you know, and you don't want to waste a minute of it. I mean, you know, not, at least not 10 minutes of it. Let's see here. I wonder how long I could actually play this. Did pretty well earlier. Let's see here. Okay, and it's risky, you know. It's not smart to just be clicking around, you know. It works at first, but you'll run into a mine sooner or later. Uh, dang it. Uh, luckily, I will get back to this. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'll save this game. Oh, wait, I'll just uh, minimize it. Okay, guys, uh, this is going to be great. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at creating 3D depth from still images. So here I have this destroyed uh, city here, and uh, what I've done is broken it up into 3D layers right in After Effects, and here is an example. Usually I pre-render them, but uh, man, you, that's that's the kind of time, you know, that's how strapped for time I am. I got to pre-render while you guys wait. I'm sorry about that. So as you can see, we're kind of flying through some rubble and you can uh, sort of get the idea that there's some third dimensional interactivity happening here. So if I take the orbit camera tool and just kind of fly around the side, you see I actually have broken this up into several layers. Now another example is here, look at that pre-rendered, okay, because that's how much I care about you guys. So here we have a few layers that are now 3D, but the difference here is the background has been painted out so the actor can sort of parallax with the background and not be seen. So kind of a, kind of a good example uh, also. Now I do want to thank everyone uh, on the blog uh, with all the comments that you guys made. I really appreciate them, uh, most of them. And uh, definitely, uh, definitely hold on to that. Uh, for the future. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I did receive a few emails and you guys were a little concerned about using Photoshop, um, you know, in After Effects tutorials, you know, and it really makes sense because I'm doing After Effects tutorials. I should stay in After Effects. So I really apologize for, you know, taking you elsewhere when, you know, you came here for After Effects tutorials. So anyway, um, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go over here to Photoshop and what we're gonna do is sort of extract our character from the background of this image. So, here's our background layer. I'm gonna choose Layer, Duplicate, Layer. Now, of course, there are several ways to do an extraction in Photoshop. I'm just gonna take a look at one of the ways and what I'm gonna do is take the Pen tool and kind of zoom in here and I'm just gonna draw around make sure you have sort of this pen tool selected and we're just gonna draw around our actor so it's a lot like making a mask in After Effects and you can do this part in After Effects but the painting tools that we're gonna be getting into in a moment aren't really available so you know you can zoom in and make this uh, really good or just uh, rough it you know, depending on uh, what you're doing. You know, if you're doing a project, you're getting paid, you know, kind of work on it. You know, if you're doing a free tutorial on a website, you know, for free, yeah, you know, just uh, do the best you can, you know. So, okay. Drawing around the hat. And, okay, now we got to this spot. We have his leg right here. We can see part of his leg here, but we have a tree stump. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just assume that his leg does extend on. And so I'm just going to finish up the, uh, the shape there. And then if I take this arrow tool, 
the path uh, selection arrow tool, I can select the mask, right click, choose uh, one of these, make selection. We get a dialog here and uh, all this looks good, we'll choose OK. Now we've made a selection, I can take the selection tool, right click on the selection and choose layer via cut. And that will basically uh, cut that part out. There you go. Now I'm going to zoom in here again and I'm going to take the stamp tool and what we're going to do is sort of paint the leg out. So I'm just going to take some of the leather here and uh, just sort of start drawing on this. Now obviously the pants are not made out of leather but I'm sure that this will, uh, this will work. The idea is just to kind of fill it in so that the casual viewer kind of won't see what's going on. So, painted the leg in. That looks great. He looks like he's got some knee problems, but we'll just uh, we'll move on. Now, I also want to extract this uh, tree stump. So, I'm going to go back to my original layer and make another copy. Layer duplicate. And I'll put this on top. And again, uh, well, we could take the... Uh, pen tool, but I'm just going to take the polygon lasso tool, a little quicker, and just uh, make a selection. So what you want to do is basically extract any elements that look like they could be in the 3D space. Now of course, we have all these trees back here, but I don't want to go and, you know, draw around every single leaf. Um, you know, instead I'll just keep that as a background. Now, you want to think about this. Once you understand how to do this, you're going to know what pictures you're going to want to do this to and what pictures you don't want to try to do this with. We've made our selection around the stump here, so I'm going to right click and choose Layer via Cut. And again, we've sort of cut this out and I'll go and throw away the excess. And so now we have our tree stump, Action Star, and we have our background. So now, here's the tricky part, the part you're going to run into that's going to be like, okay, what can you do? What we need to do is get rid of these elements that we've extracted. So, I'll take the stamp tool again here. And uh, stamp tool, the way it works is you alt-click. And from this point, I'm going to then start painting and just start drawing in what we see. I'm going to right click and bring the hardness down or the softness up and uh, increase the diameter so it's a little smoother. And we just start painting and we're just sort of bringing this area over here. And uh, you know, you can do that multiple times while you're working. So let's see. Y you just alt click and start painting. So alt click. Start painting, we'll sort of alt-click uh, some of these trees here. Fill this in, alt-click, alt-click, alt-click. Okay, and uh... Okay, so no sign of our action star. Okay, back in After Effects, I'm going to import that Photoshop file. So I'm going to choose File, Import, and select the Tino Jones layer there. And I'm going to make sure we import it as a composition. And then I choose Open. So now a composition has been created that uses all of those Photoshop files. So I'm going to double click. And now we see our layers right here, all separated as before. Now, I worked on this earlier and uh, did a little better job, so we're going to use my comp, which is just inside, and I'll alt double click. And so, same thing in here, we have our uh, tree, our actor, and our background. So, I'll turn those layers on, and I'm going to go ahead and turn them into 3D layers. So, F4, bring up our 3D switch, and we'll turn them all to 3D. Let's see, we'll call the first one tree, actor, background. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new camera. So layer new camera, 
We'll use the uh, 35 millimeter preset, which is okay. Now, what we want to do is distribute these layers across Z space. So we want them to be kind of, you know, far away, close up. So we'll take our tree and we'll roll over the blue axis, the one that's pointed right at us, and we'll click and we'll drag so it kind of brings that layer towards us. Then same thing, select the background layer, grab the Z axis and push it far away. And grab a corner and hold down shift. And we want to just scale it back up. Same thing for the tree. We'll scale it down. And now if we come and get the orbit camera tool, we can then click and sort of drag. And now we have this great 3D scene. And we can add a couple of keyframes to the camera position, anchor point. You know, hit P, hold down shift, hit A. And uh, we'll turn on the stopwatch. And move forward a couple of seconds. And we can, you know, sort of zoom in here. And uh, create a nice dynamic camera move from a picture. Also, we can do some other things. So, say we want to instead, you know, move the camera over here. And then animate it into place. Well, take our background layer and just scale it up even more. One thing I want to kind of point out in this whole process is we're doing sort of an artistic effect. So don't worry if an element isn't exactly where it was in the photograph. Feel free to move things around like I want this tree element to be over here. Well, nobody's going to know that that element isn't supposed to be there except you. So. Don't worry about moving elements around to make things look more dynamic or if you want to put things into the shot to make them seem more busy. Say I want to put some trees overhead. Feel free to do that. Don't, don't just be limited by what picture you took. As with our original example, you can see that you know even a couple layers is enough to really sell that effect. And as you can see, I put that muzzle flash just out in front so it looks like it's closer to our face and I didn't demonstrate that but I'll show you that really quick is I just took a muzzle flash from the action movie essentials DVD put it out here and uh, turn it into a still frame so right click time uh, freeze frame and just uh, move that into place set the 3d layer switch and then move it into place. And the other thing you can do too is rotate it. Since, you know, that's sort of the angle it's at. And then move it into place. Okay, so now you can kind of see we've sort of created this 3D muzzle flash. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's a pretty straightforward effect, but uh, I'm sure you guys will come up with some great things. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finish my game of Minesweeper. So, you know, wish me luck.